This guy stole $120 million from Google and Facebook and nearly got away with it. Hearing this, you're probably thinking that this guy, Evaldus Rimasaskas, was some sort of insane hacker or insider. He must have breached through Google security systems or used insider knowledge to siphon money from Facebook. But in reality, he was just an ordinary man from Lithuania and the scheme he used wasn't especially notable either. He used a classic email phishing scheme, yet somehow he was able to trick some of the smartest people and companies in the world. The craziest part was that these companies didn't even know they were being scammed and he could have easily gotten away with it if he didn't try to push his luck. You see, Evaldus didn't just set out to hit a jackpot and retire, he was looking to defraud as many companies for as much money as possible. So every time he hoodwinked a company, he would just do it again to the same company or the next company. Originally, he stole $23 million from Google throughout 2013. At that point, that's literally generational wealth, but our man of all this wasn't happy. Just two years later, he would target Facebook and bag another $98 million. This greed, however, would eventually get him noticed, and these companies would notify the FBI, who would track him down to Lithuania. They would of course arrest him and he would be sentenced to five years in jail, but the same could not be said about his associates who were never found. Apparently, Evaldus would wire the stolen funds all around the world as soon as he received them. So who knows how many people were involved and how much they were each able to get away with. But all of this begs the question, how did he do it? How was he able to outsmart the smartest companies in the world and to get away with it for years? And what does this mean regarding the security of the data that all of us have stored on these platforms? Well, here's the story of Evaldus Remesaskas, the guy who stole $120 million from tech companies and nearly got away. Taking a look back, the story of Evaldus traces back to their early 2010s to Lithuania. Like any country, Lithuania is mostly filled with awesome law-abiding people and great culture. But unfortunately, they are notorious for one crime, car theft. If you've ever heard of someone's car being stolen, it was probably dismantled within no time and shipped off to Lithuania. From there, the car parts are listed on sites like eBay like nothing happened. Their listings are usually way cheaper than everything else on the market for, well, obvious reasons. But by the early 2010s, authorities were starting to catch on and they were busting these car rings left and right. So our man Evaldus needed a new strategy, something that wasn't so hot and risky, something that no one was even paying attention to. One of the main problems with carjacking for criminals is that it basically always gets notified to the police. I mean, who wouldn't report to the police that they had their car stolen? Not to mention, carjacking wasn't even all that lucrative given how much risk was involved. If you wanted to make a million dollars for example and you sold each car part for $500 on average, you would need 2,000 car parts. This means that you would have to steal dozens of cars, resulting in dozens of police reports. Obviously, not a very good risk to reward ratio, so Evaldus decided to hatch up his own plan. He first asked himself, where can I get a lot of money without the victim even noticing? And the answer became clear pretty quickly, filthy rich tech companies. There was only one problem, he was by no means the first or the last person to think of this idea. Tech companies know all about how they're vulnerable to cyber attacks not just to steal money, but to steal personal data, top secret technology, and confidential information. Just think about this, even the CIA stores their information on Amazon servers. So maintaining a secure public image is no doubt a top priority for these companies, and I don't think you'd be surprised here that these tech companies invest tens of billions into cybersecurity. But this really only protects these companies against cyber threats, people who are trying to directly hack into their systems to wreak havoc. Evaldus wasn't even considering this option because, well, he didn't even stand a chance against the IT departments of these companies. So Evaldus looked to identify a weaker entry point, somewhere money was already exiting the company. This left Evaldus with really only one option, the payroll department. For most companies, paying employees and other businesses is by far their biggest expense, and Google and Facebook were no exception. Google, for example, spent $56 billion on payroll last year. But 
Paying employees is a pretty streamlined and highly scrutinized process, so this wasn't exactly a great entry point. Paying businesses, however, was highly custom and usually handled on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you posed as a business, you would only have to trick a handful of people who are approving a given invoice, not the entire company's IT department or security infrastructure. And with that, Evaldez had his entry point. Companies like Google and Facebook pay out money to thousands, if not tens of thousands of different companies for all sorts of reasons from manufacturing and logistics to research and legal services. While newer partners may get more scrutiny when it comes to billing, most established partners just send over invoices and these companies approve them without a second thought. So Evaldez decided to pose as one of these partners, a company called Quanta Computer. Like me, most of y'all have probably never heard of this company, so here's what they do. Quanta is a Taiwanese manufacturer that specializes in producing enterprise hardware like servers. They're actually super reputable in the industry as they work with basically every tech company you can think of. This includes Apple, Dell, HP, Amazon, Cisco, LG, Sony, Microsoft, Facebook, and so much more. So I don't think you'd be surprised to hear that they pull in over $40 billion worth of revenue and $1.5 billion worth of profit every year. Similarly, Google and Facebook were also not surprised when they received tabs worth a couple million dollars from Quanta. Evaldus went ahead and created fake invoices and contracts and signed them with the names of various leaders at Quanta. He would then send over these documents to Google and Facebook from a Quanta domain email address. You know those random emails that you get from Apple and Amazon stating that you've been charged X amount? Well, this is exactly what Evaldus was doing. But instead of targeting elderly folks who didn't know better for a few hundred bucks, Evaldus was targeting tech giants for millions. Same tactic, but completely different scale. With all the articles that these companies put out about identifying and stopping phishing, you would think that the staff at these companies would know better, but it turns out they didn't. You see, it's not like Evaldus charged Google 23 million and Facebook 98 million in one fell swoop. According to the Department of Justice, Evaldus would regularly send multi-million dollar invoices to these companies. If we assume that each invoice was worth 4 to $5 million, Evaldus trolled Google 5 times and Facebook a laughable 20 times. So alright, whatever, people at these companies didn't put too much scrutiny on these invoices and they approved them. They must have some sort of established payment system with these companies, right? So even if they accidentally made an unnecessary payment, it would be no problem getting the money back from the real company. Surely, these companies weren't sending tens of millions to some random ass Latvian bank accounts detailed in the in- They were sending tens of millions to some random ass Latvian bank accounts detailed in the invoice. To be honest, I'm not going to defend of all this, but you can't feel too bad for these companies either. There's really no one to blame but themselves and their gross negligence. In this situation, any normal person would have no chance of any recourse. But given the power and status of these companies, you can bet they got justice. Evaldus was smart enough to not hold on to the money in the same account that he received it. He would instantly spread the money across the world into bank accounts in Latvia, Cyprus, Slovakia, Lithuania, Hungary, and Hong Kong. Considering this, it's surprising that he didn't take more precautions to secure his own freedom, especially when he's scamming big tech companies. With all this money, he could have easily moved to a non-extraditing country like the United Arab Emirates and lived it up in Dubai. But he would stick to Lithuania. I guess he must have felt that he was safe behind his computer screen, and as long as the money was dispersed and untrackable, he was good. This was of course a blunder. As soon as Google and Facebook noticed some discrepancies in their accounting, they would identify the fraudulent charges and notify the FBI. For the FBI, tracking down someone like Evaldus was relatively easy and they would have him cornered in no time. And with no plausible deniability, Evaldus would just plead guilty and eventually he'd be sentenced to 5 years in prison. If you're wondering what happened to the money, well, Evaldus would forfeit $49 million of it, and he was ordered to pay $27 million more in restitution. Facebook and Google would claim this as a victory, as they were technically able to recover the majority of the funds, at least on paper. It's not clear if Evaldus has paid the restitution yet or if he ever will, so that still leaves $44 to $71 million worth of stolen funds unaccounted for. But I don't really think Google or Facebook really cares about recovering these funds. For Google, the total stolen funds are equivalent to three and a half hours of profit. 
For Facebook, the total stolen funds are equivalent to 37 hours of profit. So for these companies, patching up all this and putting him behind bars was more about the principle and making a statement as opposed to recovering the funds. Spending even more effort on recovering the remaining funds is really just not worth it for these companies. So Evaldus may very well have a fortune to return to when he eventually gets released around the end of 2024. But all of this still leaves the question, how was he able to pull off something so simple against these companies? Well, the bright side is that while this incident is truly quite embarrassing for these companies, it's not indicative of their IT or cybersecurity. As far as we know, their systems are still as strong and secure as ever. And this incident has little to do with anything other than gross negligence and oversight. In the end, this story shows us that no company is truly 100% secure. I mean, a random person in Lithuania was literally able to pull a quick one on Google and Facebook with very little skills and resources. All he had to do was attack them when they weren't looking. He could have gotten away with it too if he played his cards just a little better. But Who's to say that he didn't come out on top anyway? I'm sure there's a lot of people who'd be happy to do 5 years in jail for 40 to 70 million dollars and the title of successfully scamming Google and Facebook. And that's the story of the guy who stole 120 million dollars from Google and Facebook and nearly got away with it. Do you feel bad for Google or Facebook? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you can't believe that these companies fell for it. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and to consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.